Hi guys, David Lewis 11 here and in this video I'm very excited to bring to you a fourth collaboration with Rhino Tool in our ongoing series of Spider-Man reviews and in this video we're going to be giving you our review of The Amazing Spider-Man. Now before we get into the review, Ryan, why don't you introduce yourself to everyone? What's going on guys? Ryan Tool here, back with David O'Sullivan once again for our fourth review in our Spider-Man collab, Lean to Spider-Man Homecoming in July. David, it's been so much fun talking about the Sam Raimi trilogy with you on switching back and forth on our channels. Now we're on the Mark Webb series, so thank you for having me on here, David. No problem, and um, well, let's just uh, get straight into this now. And of course, The Amazing Spider-Man is the uh, 2012 comic book movie reboot of the Spider-Man franchise, directed by Mark Webb. You know, it stars Andrew Garfield in the titular role as Spider-Man. We've got Emma Stone in there as well, Risa fans, Sally Field, and Martin Sheen. Obviously, The Amazing Spider-Man retells the classic origin story of how Peter Parker became the superhero known as Spider-Man. As far as my opening thoughts on the film are concerned, I do like this film. I think it was good. It's just, I felt it suffered in the respect that it felt very similar to kind of Raimi's first Spider-Man film, in that it would seem like just a bit of a kind of, you know, beat by beat remake of that original film. And I, I think it was well done. I, I, I liked the film, but it just it didn't really offer anything new or different to the mix. It was kind of like more of what we've already seen already. I, I don't know. What, what do you think, Ryan? What are your opening thoughts on The Amazing Spider-Man? Yeah, my thoughts are the same as you, David. Um, the first time watching this, I thought it was okay. Um, just the same things you said. It's nothing, anything original. It's just Spider-Man 1 copy and pasted just with different actors and a different director. And... Just my honest opinion, re-watching it a second time, eh, didn't like it as much a second time. I thought it was really unnecessary, kind of boring. It's not a bad movie, it's not like Amazing Spider-Man 2. It's just decent or acceptable, if you will. I do have some positives with this film. Even though this film had a lot of what we'd already seen before, it still managed to feel kind of fresh and different enough in that, you know, that set it apart from the other Spider-Man films. You know, it, it felt a lot more contemporary, I think, than Raimi's... Uh, 2002 original. Raimi's films felt more kind of comic booky, more fantastical. This felt like it was trying to be a little bit more kind of grounded, a bit more kind of modern and contemporary. And I, I kind of liked what they did there. It didn't always work, but I liked the fact that it it felt like almost like it's set in more of a real world, more of a real uh, city. It just helped it feel more modern, contemporary, and up to date. It felt like it was actually kind of set in a believable kind of realistic world, you know, of New York City. What do you think about this, Ryan? Do you like how it kind of felt a little bit more contemporary and up to date? Yeah, I mean, it kind of looked realistic. I kind of like the way Mark Webb made it really look like mm -hmm. New York City this time around. And in, in Sam Raimi's trilogy, like, New York looked really bright mm -hmm. and vivid. And in The Amazing Spider-Man, it looked a lot more dark and rural. Like, you can actually feel the dark streets of New York City extremely well. That's something I do like about this movie overall. Yeah, just the whole world, the settings, the location, I really liked about this movie. Another thing I also liked was that I liked how this film spent a little bit more time with Peter at school because even though I really like Raimi's original film, he kind of he's out of school within like the first twenty minutes. But this film, they spent a little bit more time with him as kind of a kid at high school, and yeah. not a, it's not like the whole film he's at, at school or anything, but. You know, he's not like out of school within the first 10 minutes. We spend a lot more time with him, you know, there as a student in high school. And I kind of like that. And also we've got his his love interest is like Gwen Stacy. And that's kind of like more in line with the comics in that that was his first love interest. as like a kid at school. So I kind of like that aspect. Did you like how it spent a little bit more time at school as well in this one? Yeah, I agree. You like the whole school elements. That's who Peter Parker really is. Just my problems with it. I kind of didn't feel like I was watching Peter Parker straight out of the comics. Tobey Maguire's version is extremely nerdy. He's too <laughs> nervous to talk to Mary Jane. And in this one, he's like a skater punk type of dude. Like, that's not who Peter Parker is to me. But yeah, I agree, David. I like how he's more in school. That's who Peter Parker is, a teenager in high school. Just those elements are kind of cool. And it's not that Andrew Garfield was bad in this movie. I just think he's kind of miscast a little yeah. bit like you said earlier in the spider-man one review a 30 year old playing a high schooler just doesn't <laughs> really work to me like how you first thought of toby Maguire. just andrew garfield gives a fine performance emma stone gives a fine performance 
Sally Field, a lot of people complain that she's too young to play Aunt May. But I thought she was decent. Martin Sheen as Uncle Ben, he's fine. The performances weren't my problem with this movie. Mm -hmm. Just n nothing original about it and a completely unnecessary reboot. Yeah, as far as um, performances, I also kind of agree on Andrew Garfield. I, I liked him in the role. I think he did a good job. But again, there's that thing you bring up about it. it's a bit weird seeing like a 30-year-old playing high school. Yeah. And also, even though I did like him in that role, as you said, it was a little kind of hard to kind of believe that he's like this nerdy kid when he looks like the kind of cool popular kid you know, yeah. you're, yeah. you're trying to buy into the fact that he's this nerdy outcast and yet he just looks like the really cool popular guy that everyone would like so you know they tried putting glasses on him but it didn't always work he kind of didn't really look like a nerd yeah. I liked him in the role I think I like Tobey Maguire better I feel like yes. Tobey Maguire was the better Peter Parker but I think Andrew Garfield was kind of the better Spider-Man maybe yeah. he was kind of more quippy and he felt more like Spider-Man when he's got the suit on but just as Peter Parker you didn't always buy into him as kind of a nerd yeah. so I, I did like him in the role he just you know he didn't really he came across more like a kind of cool popular kid even though he tried to sound like a kind of a bit of a nerd it wasn't always convincing however one thing I did like that they did with Peter Parker in this film was that they showed more of his genius intellect kind of side we, we have him kind of building the mechanical web shooters which is kind of more in line with the comics and obviously kind of the original yeah. had the organic web shooters and it's not a major thing but I kind of like that they showed that he's like this kind of intelligent kind of you know, scientific genius almost and he's like building all his own stuff so that was kind of cool um, yeah. Only a little minor detail, but what do you think about them making kind of Peter Parker more of a kind of you know science science guy, more of a genius in this film? Yeah, that's kind of cool. Like they made him in the first movie, sorry, the Sam Raimi trilogy. Mm. They made him out to be kind of lazy. Like yeah. he doesn't go to school often. Like like it doesn't make him seem like he's smart. In this movie, you actually see that he does know some scientific stuff. And I kind of like his banters back and forth with Dr. Connors in this movie. It kind of shows Peter does have a smart side mm. about him, and he's not just lazy. But yeah, I kind of like those elements about the movie, too. And even though Dr. Connors was one of my flaws with the movie, just I kind of like mm. seeing that banter. Yeah, like, like you mentioned with the other, the other guys in there, I do think they all give good performances. I like Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy. Um, I like Risa fans as the, the lizard. I like that they try to do something different with having kind of the lizard in there as the villains of just having the Green Goblin again, but he was a bit of a kind of a generic kind of, you know, cliche villain with a, a plan. Yes, yes. It's a bit kind of, you know, formulaic and we've seen it loads of times before. I, I like that they try to do something different with having the lizard in there, but I don't know, it's just his whole kind of plan, his motivations felt a little kind of just you know, just cheesy and just generic, just stereotypical bad guy. I mean, what, yeah. what did you think about the lizard? Did you like the lizard in this film? I did not like the lizard. Yeah, my thoughts were the same as you, David. Just, <laughs> this is a villain we've seen before. It's Doc Ock and Green Goblin mixed together into one. Just, he has the same type of plan. He's <laughs> a scientist related to uh, Peter's father, and he has this plan, something about how like humans aren't really his thing. He wants to become more like creatures, like lizards. I wish Lizard was so much better in this movie. The CGI on him, I didn't, oh my God, it was so bad. If you really think about it, David, this is what Spider-Man 4 would have been like. They were originally gonna yeah. have the Vulture and the Lizard in Spider-Man 4 until it got rebooted. So yeah, I wish the Lizard was home up a lot better in this movie. Just a lot of the elements particularly didn't, weren't didn't work for me overall yeah it's a little annoying because there's some good things in this movie there's some good elements but it just felt like they were kind of just doing the same thing as Raimi's original but just oh instead of Green Goblin we just have you know the lizard in there instead of yeah. Mary Jane we have Gwen Stacy so it, there was different characters and they tried to do some things differently but overall it was kind of just the same story just redone with different actors yeah. I did like the lizard as a villain I think it was cool seeing the lizard for the first time instead of just Green Goblin again but he, he was a bit of a kind of just a forgettable villain. He wasn't that memorable. And I think Reese Ifans did a good job in the role, but he wasn't like a you know a standout villain or anything. However, one of the best positives I have of this film is kind of the way it you know, captured the action. Because although I love all the action scenes in Raimi's films, I like that this film tried to do something different. They made it look like it was more in camera. It was more like practical, actually seeing him swinging. Like, because... With the Raimi films, even though it, they look really great, you can tell it's like a CGI Spider-Man, where in this film there's a lot more practical effects. You could actually you know, tell it was a real guy swinging. So I thought that was cool. And it, it's, it looks a bit 
awkward and weird in some scenes, but I thought it was quite cool how they kind of did a lot of stuff practically with the action in this film. What, what did you think about the action scenes in the film, Ryan? Yeah, some of the action was cool in the movie. I liked the the fight scene of them in the school, and we see Stan Lee's cameo. I was laughing oh. out loud with that. I liked the final battle in the movie. It was kind of cool, and it's kind of cliche overall. And one of my big flaws with this movie is the suit. I hate the suit yeah. in this movie. And it's something that Chris Stuckman said. It looked like a basketball. <laughs> That's not what Spider-Man's suit looks like overall. I just, oh my God. This is by far the worst suit for Spider-Man overall. And I do like how in the action scenes of him after Uncle Ben dies in this movie, of him going after the criminals, and that's that's Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. Even though some action sequences do look dated and obviously CG, mm -hmm. but they, they look kind of cool. Yeah, although I did like the action scenes, and I think it did look cool from a visual perspective. Like you said, the, the whole suit... I get what they were going for. They're trying to go for more of like a, a spandex. You know, if a kid could actually kind of design this himself based on real kind of suits, but it just it didn't look that great, did it? It just it, it had weird yeah. eyes as well. Instead of the big white eyes, he had some weird kind of like glasses for lenses. It just yeah. it just didn't look that attractive. It didn't really look that appealing. It didn't really look like a proper Spider-Man no. <laughs> suit. Um, had, the scenes of him swinging around were cool, but the actual suit itself kind of wasn't that great. I think the one thing that makes Spider-Man 2 did better than this film was the suits, you know, that was the one yes, big improvement. I agree it's, with that. The yes. suit actually looks straight like, out of the it's probably one of the Yeah, it's probably one of the best suits we've ever had in Amazing Spider-Man 2. It's just the rest of the film yeah. wasn't that good. But, um... No. Yeah. <laughs> We're not there yet, man. <laughs> yeah, I did like the, the fight scenes between uh, Spider-Man and the Lizard, though. Um, I didn't think Lizard was, you know, that great of a bad guy, but it was cool seeing Spider-Man go up against more of an animalistic kind of foe where they're kind of like, it was almost like two creatures fighting, you know, that, that battle at the end, you know, it's not got some, like, really amazing, memorable action scenes or anything, but it was cool seeing them go up against one another, I thought, in those fights. What do you think about the fights between Spider-Man and the Lizard? Yeah, the, the fight scenes aren't really that memorable, but they're fun. Mm. It kind of showcases Spider-Man's abilities and Lizard's abilities all in all. As I said, the school fight was pretty cool. The end fight was pretty cool. Just... Nothing original about it, and they're kind of passable, one-watch, good fight mm. scenes. But there's no yeah. train scene, obviously. You remember that ten years later. Mm. Just yeah. <laughs> and like I mentioned earlier, by far the best standout moment is probably the Stan Lee cameo. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of eclipses all the action in the film. Like mm. you know, We've seen Spider-Man and the Lizard fight, and it's kind of cool, but then as soon as that Stan Lee cameo happens, it's like, that's like by far the best best moment yes, it's probably it's absolutely. probably one of the best Stan Lee cameos in the whole I agree that's in my uh, top five you know, yeah yeah it's just such a great moment it's, it goes on for quite a while as well where they're just fighting behind him and then he's just there listening to the music <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah uh, it was worth it for the Stan Lee cameo I guess <laughs> yeah so I guess we can go more onto the negative side of things now we kind of touched on a few of the negatives we've already talked about the lizard really you know wasn't very memorable of a villain you know it's a fairly generic in terms of his you know motivations and his arc in the film you know it, it wasn't really that great of a villain unfortunately but my biggest problem with this film is that it's kind of just retelling this origin story that we yes. already know i didn't really do anything different and you could argue oh well they're doing this for the next generation of kids that weren't around when the first one came out but it was only 10 years before this that the first Raimi film came out. And it was only five years before this that Spider-Man 3 came out. So it was like the yeah. Raimi trilogy had only just finished. And they're already rebooting it. I felt like it was a bit too soon to reboot it. I think it's working now with Tom Holland. But I think they just went into this reboot a bit too quickly. And yes, yes. They tried to do some things differently. The whole kind of premise surrounding the, the film was it's going to be the untold story. And... It was didn't do anything different. Exactly. You know? it was, <laughs> what, what do you think about it being very similar to the kind of Raimi's original? Yeah, that was one of my negatives. I just basically said an unnecessary reboot. I mm. mean, I don't get why this needed to be rebooted. Yes, I agreed that it's time to pass the torch all on to someone new, someone younger. I love what the MCU did casting Tom Holland, who was a younger 20-year-old mm. Peter Parker, not a 32-year-old Peter Parker. Just... Yeah. Just like you said, David, the marketing for this movie was awful. They said it's going to be the untold story, and it's <laughs> Spider-Man 1 all over again. And that's the disappointed aspect of The Amazing Spider-Man. It's nothing new, 
just with new actors and a new director. So that's my biggest problem with The Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, I'm fine with reboots, but it kind of did pretty much everything the same, like, you know, him getting bitten by the radioactive spider, kind of the death of Uncle Ben, and the problem I have with it being so similar is that those moments all work so much better in the Raimi film. Like the, the death of Uncle yes. Ben in the original film was like really powerful and emotional. It was, and yeah. this film, it just really fell flat for me. I don't know why. I just it just didn't really work. It didn't really kind of hit me on an emotional yeah. level. I think no it just emotional. Yeah, it, it tried to do the same kind of thing beat by beat as the Raimi film, and it just really fell flat. I think, and you know, yeah, you know, going back onto kind of it promising the untold story. It's like. We were supposed to learn actually what happened to Peter's parents, why they left, what happened to them, and we didn't learn anything. And it's like, it's not until the Amazing Spider-Man Two that they revealed all that to us. And I feel like, yeah, all that <laughs> stuff in the Amazing Spider-Man Two should have been in the first Amazing Spider-Man because it kind of bogged down the second film when it kind of should have been revealed to us in Amazing Spider-Man. I yeah. thought because we, we we eventually do learn what happened to his parents, but that's all kind of feels out of place in the second film. I feel like it probably should have been in this film, but. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what happened. I guess they just cut it out or decided to, you know, wait for the second movie. So there we go. That basically wraps up our negatives on The Amazing Spider-Man. As far as my final thoughts on the film are concerned, overall, I do like this movie. I think it's pretty good. It just, you know, it didn't really offer anything new or different to the mix that helped it kind of stand out from the crowd. It felt very kind of similar to Raimi's original, doing a very kind of similar things in its story, but it just didn't work anywhere near as well as the first Spider-Man film. So I do like this film. I think it has some good things in it. I do like the performances from the cast. Um, there's some, you know, fairly interesting and exciting action scenes, but on the most part, it kind of fell flat. And going back and re-watching the film, even though I really enjoyed it the first time, every time I went back and re-watched it, I kind of liked it less and less and less. And I don't hate the film. I don't think it's necessarily a bad movie. It's just, it's not that great of a film it's not that memorable so yeah those are basically my final thoughts what about you ryan what are your final thoughts on the amazing spider-man uh my final thoughts are i didn't really like it that much a second time the first time i thought it was okay just it's an unnecessary reboot just the performances are fine just the overall stories nothing we knew just it's everything we've seen before in the end, watching it a second time, I kind of gave it a lower score than what I originally gave it. Yeah, as far as my star rating I give to this film, I'd probably give it three stars. I think it's perfectly fine. It's okay. Um, I don't dislike the film necessarily, but I don't think it's that great of a film either. So yeah, I'd probably give it three stars. What about you, Ryan? What rating would you give Amazing Spider-Man? So with all the things that I've said, all the reasonings, I'm going to give The Amazing Spider-Man a 2 out of 5 stars. And David, just like your ranking, I originally gave it a 3 out of 5, but just re-watching it, I really didn't enjoy it. I just bumped it down to a 2 out of 5. Yeah, I don't blame you. I mean, I initially liked this movie a whole lot more, yeah. you know, back when it was first released. I, like, I really loved it. And then just as the years went on, I went back and revisited it and it kind of just really, just it just really didn't do it for me. I just... It just, it just doesn't really hold up. Um, it's it's yeah, serviceable, it's perfectly fine, but it ultimately didn't really need to happen. I agree. Um, there we go, guys. That wraps up mine and Ryan's review of The Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, we'll be coming back next month to do our review of The Amazing Spider-Man 2, which will be the last <sighs> film in the Spider-Man series. Why do you torture me, David? <laughs> Yeah, so The Amazing yeah. <laughs> Spider-Man 2 review will be going up on Ryan's channel next month. And then, of course, we've got Homecoming then in July. Um, as far as you know, wrapping up our thoughts here, Ryan, is there anything else you'd like to say before we finish up here? Well, thank you very much, David. It's been a blast again, as I always keep saying, reviewing these. Now on to the Mark Webb series. It's not as enjoyable watching them, but it's fun reviewing them with you, man. If you guys don't know who I am, I'm a movie reviewer just like David. I do movie reviews. Blu-ray updates, also trailer reactions, also. If you guys want to find my channel, you can just type in Rhino Tool on YouTube. It's real easy. You'll find me. And I also have a Twitter. Find me at Rhino Tool MR. And also on my Facebook page, Rhino Tool Movies. Thank you again, David, as always. I cannot wait to do an extreme rant on The Amazing Spider-Man 2 next month on my channel. So thank you again, David. Yep, thanks again for joining me Ryan and that pretty much wraps up our video. If you like this and you haven't already, be sure to click subscribe to see more. But for now, I've been David O'Sullivan. I'll see you next time. Bye!